So this is uh, section 4.2, uh, Foundations of Math 30. And uh, we are introducing two things. Uh, permutations is the first thing that we're going to talk about. And factorial notation. So that's what this section is about. Now, permutations has nothing to do with perms, uh, you know, curly hair or anything like that. Uh, there's really not really much of this word from everyday life that would help remind you what this is about. So we'll have to take this into account. But uh, we, we've talked about fundamental counting principle, right, and basic counting methods. So we're talking about how many ways can uh, things happen, can an uh, arrangement of things happen. And permutations, you have a definition right down here, okay? So a permutation is an arrangement of distinguishable objects in a definite order, okay? So in your, uh, in your notebook, let's uh, just jot down a definition for that. An arrangement, okay? So the first important thing is when you see this word arrangement, okay, it means definite order, okay? How do you arrange things? Well, this is first, this is second, this is third, right? It's an arrangement. It's not just a group of things in whatever order. So this permutation actually refers to objects in a definite order. And we are talking about distinguishable objects. So we're not talking about three virtually identical things. How can we arrange them? Uh, that comes a little bit later, all right? But they have to be distinguishable. So one needs to be able to be different from the other. So for example, A and B are two distinguishable things, and they have two definite orders. So if we lined up A and B in a row, we would have two possible arrangements, A, B, and B, A. Everyone see that? Those are two different permutations. Now, if we had, um, if, so if we had A, B, and C now, um, why don't you take a, a moment to write down all of the different permutations for the three letters A, B, and C. So how many different orders can you order these three letters? Go ahead and take a moment to, to just do that. So if you had a chance to try, try this out here, I wrote down the, com the uh, permutations here. Now it does the order uh, of the ones you wrote down doesn't matter, but it's a good idea to start with the first one and then play around with the arrangements of the remaining ones. Okay, so that's what I did here. See, I just reversed those. So A in the front, then we have BC and ACB. Then start with the next one. Let's go to B, and then play around with the arrangement of the remaining two. And then go to the third one, arrangement of the remaining two. So that's a, that's a good way to think about that. But those are all the different arrangements that we could have with A, B, and C. Now, it gets more complicated if we add another letter, and then another letter after that. So the, the number of permutations grows uh, ex exponentially, really. It, it grows by quite a bit. Now, there must be uh, <coughs> some kind of shortcut for us to find the number. Now, to list them all is, uh, is going to be pretty, uh, um, pretty important for us to be able to list the permutations. But to find the number of them, we can see that in this example here that I've so cleverly and skillfully drawn out for you here, that um, you know, how many ways or how many arrangements, permutations, could be made by six children that line up for the water fountain. As you recall here, there's a little girl at the water fountain. So what if there are five more kids behind her? And the teacher says, you can go have a drink. So how many different ways could those kids arrange themselves? That's the question that we're going to be able to answer here. Now, it's going to be, it would be pretty tough to list all those ways, wouldn't it? Like, I mean, you know, if we consider this, let's start with, you know, okay, <laughs> uh, now, that's the second permutation, okay. Now, we're going to, you know, now three, two, five, four, six. I mean, to go along and list all of these, you can see that this is going to take quite a long time, right? You have to play around with the arrangement of all of them. So, it's going to be substantial. So, we don't want to list all of them, but what we want to find out is how many different ways they could be arranged. So, do you remember from last section the fundamental counting principle, okay? If we have a certain number of ways to do a certain thing, and we also have a number of ways to do a second certain thing, you multiply the number of ways that you could do both things simultaneously. So think about this. We're talking about um, positions now, okay? So the positions in front of the line, or in front of the uh, water fountain. So I'm going to do this, okay? 
I'm going to make six spots, okay? There's six spots. Now there's six kids. So let's think about it this way. How many kids could be first in line? Like if we're not talking about the other five, how many kids could be first in line? Okay, there's six of you. So the first one in line could be any one of you, right? Okay, so let's say that there are six um, choices for this first position, okay? So once the first person is placed, let's say it's Sarah here, and she's placed already, and there's five of you left, how many different choices or options do we have for the second position? Five. There's five left. Okay. Now, two of the six are placed. How many are left for the third position? Four. And there are three left, so three possible kids could fill this spot. And if you, if you take a look at it like this, okay, Look at what we've done here. We've got um, you know, the number of possibilities for six different things, really. Okay. Now, if we multiply these out, this is sort of like, I mean, consider this, um, consider the tree. Remember the tree? Uh, four, five, six, right? And um, so we, we've got all these little branches here from one and all these little branches from two, and we could do all the arrangements. Now, it's going to be pretty hefty, um, so we don't want to do that. But if we multiply all of these together, we actually would get the number of different permutations for the order of kids. So what's that going to be? Seven. Yeah, yeah, it's 720. So 1 times 2 is 2, times 3 is 6, times 4, and times 5, times 6. So you get 720 when you do all that. Okay? So there's 720 different ways we could write out the numbers 1 to 6, right? Or those, those kids. So that's a lot. But this is an easier way to figure this out. Um, do you think this would be... Um, just as easy if, let's say, we had seven or eight kids. So could you think of it similarly? So there's another kid there. And so now we have seven kids. Now this is the first position, so we have a seven here. Does that make sense? And so this would be seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. If there was just three kids, A, B, C, guess what? Three times two times one. Does that make sense? And so that, what's three times two times one? It's six. Three times two times one. All right. Now, so I hope you're connecting this. Um, fundamental counting principle and permutations. All right. So as we move um, down here, I'm going to introduce factorial notation. So again, this is just a little summary here. To find the number of permutations for n different objects, and I think I accidentally erased different here, for n different objects, We could use the fundamental counting principle, like I just described, or we could use something called factorial notation. So if this um, um, holds true, okay, we have six, let's say we have six different objects, and we want to find the permutations for these six different objects. The factorial notation, you may have seen this before, you may have seen this on your calculator, it is an exclamation mark. <laughs> it's not actually an exclamation mark. In math, we call it a factorial symbol. But this symbol right here means that we start with 6 and we multiply by successively smaller natural numbers until we get to 1. Okay? So I'll say that again. We start with 6 and we multiply by the next smallest natural number until we get to 1. Okay? So 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's what 6 factorial means. 3 factorial means we start at 3 and multiply by one number less until we get to 1, and we stop. So this one's 720, this one is 6. So the factorial notation is this exclamation mark. So see if you can find that on your calculator, okay? If you have a scientific calculator, you will have a little factorial uh, notation button. Now, I don't think I do on my graphing calculator here, but if I turn this on, and I kind of get to my home screen. I think it's under math here. Uh, should be. Nope. Where would it be under? It should be under math. Oh, let's go over to number. And oh, probability here. Here we go. Probability screen. Look at that. There it is right there. See that? Now, with your scientific calculator, you should have it right on your keypad. It might be a second function there. Okay? So try it out. Do six factorial. Try that and make sure you get 720. 6 factorial should be 720. Is that working? Yep. 3 factorial should be 6, okay, and so on. 
Awesome. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so let's do some examples from the textbook in, in, involving uh, factorial notation here. So if you're given an example like this, and I, th I think this is in your textbook page 240. So if you're given an example like this, uh, where you have some large numbers factorial, I'm not sure if your calculator can do 12 factorial. Let's just test it out. Can your calculator do 12 factorial? Because that's a, that's a pretty big number. 12 times 11 times 10 times 9. It's pretty big. Okay, can your calculator do that? Yes. Oh, it can. Good. That's not so bad. Now, what about uh, 95 factorial? Oh. Can your calculator do that? <laughs> so 95 no. factorial, that's probably going to say uh, you're crazy. Overflow. That's too big. That's too much. Okay. So right now, we could just pump this into our calculator. But what happens if we're trying to solve something that involves a piece of this um, you know, division that maybe is too large for our calculator to calculate? What are the shortcuts? So I'm going to show you that. Because if you understand factorial, you'll be able to manipulate these shortcuts. Okay. So we're going to write this out. 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 all the way. Okay, 12, 10, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's what this is. We're not going to, we're not going to calculate that. <clears throat> but I want to show you this. Um, 9 factorial is 9 times 8, 7. Okay, and 3 factorial is this. So if we write that multiplication out, notice that everything is multiplied by everything else. Okay? They're all factors. All these individual numbers are factors. So if you want to simplify this and you understand how the factorial notation works, watch this. Um, 9 factorial is actually inside 12 factorial, isn't it? So you have a common factor down here. This is a really big number, but it's the same really big number on the bottom. So those can divide out. Okay? They can like cancel out, divide out to 1. They don't cancel out to 0, they divide out to 1 technically. But you see how they can kind of go with each other. Now, this is a much easier problem that's left. It's 12 times 11 times 10 divided by 3 times 2 times 1. And your calculator surely will be able to do that. Okay? So if you want to jump on your calculator now and do something that's not going to cause an overflow in the future, then you can just simply do that. You might be able to do this in your head too. I'm not really sure. Maybe you can. So 1,320 divided by 6. 220. So our answer should be 220. Okay, so this is just a little exploration of how factorial works. And um, if you understand factorial, you run into a question like this. Um, you don't have to even write out all of the factors like this. You can maybe even go here. You can say, hey, 12 factorial is 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 factorial. You see that? I don't have to write out the rest. And you got 9 factorial down here, times 3 times 2 times 1. So you can get smart, and you can take a little bit of a shortcut and say, hey, that cancels with that, and so on. You see that? OK? So there's a bit of algebra stuff here, but just kind of also just a little bit of common, common sense here. OK? The next few examples are going to be a little bit tougher. Okay, uh, a little bit tougher, but if you be patient, uh, I think this should make a lot of sense as well. All right, so here we introduce a variable into the factorial business here. Okay, so if we start with a number, we know what we do, 6, and then we multiply by whatever is 1 less than 6, right? And then what's 1 less than that and 1 less than that? So if you think about it, n plus 3 times n plus 2 factorial. Well, this is just a, a number. But this, with a factorial behind it, means something different. So I'm going to just rewrite this here, n plus 3. Now, n plus 2 factorial. OK, if we took a number, we'd have to subtract 1 from it and multiply by that. Then we'd subtract 2 from the original number and multiply by that, right? Because 6 factorial, all right, let's go back here real quick. This is, if this was n, this would be what? n minus 1. This would be n minus 2. And this would be so on. You see that? Until you get to 1. So if we think about it this way, then that's what this question is asking. n plus 2 is like this. It's n plus 2 times n plus what? 
plus 1, because we subtract 1 from it. Now if I subtract 1 from here, what do I get? N, just N. Okay? And then we have N minus 1, and so on, minus 2, until we get down to wherever the last one is, is 1. Always 1. So, if we look at this again, n plus 2 factorial starts at n plus 2, and then we subtract 1 from that, and that's what we multiply by. Then we subtract 2 and multiply by that. And we go all the way down to 1. Now, this may cause you some problem here. Like, oh, Mr. Maxwell, we don't know how many are there. That's true. You don't know what n is. n could be a billion. And so this is a lot of numbers here. n could be 7. So it's not a big deal. It could be just a few. It doesn't matter, actually, because when we do these types of problems, um, these numbers are, are probably going to get divided out like in our first example. So you just know, and again, you don't know where to go, where to stop. n minus 100, n minus 1,000, when do you get to 1? So you, you don't have to fill this in, you just know that it ends at 1. It doesn't go to 0, it doesn't go to negatives, okay? Natural numbers only. Now did I, did I show up the factorial notation definition for you guys? I don't know if I did that. I talked about it. Now would be a good time just to quickly go back to your text. So look this up in your text here. You might want to jot this down. The factorial notation, actual definition, notice, okay, here's the, um, here's the situation. Whatever n can be anything, you always subtract 1, then, then you multiply it by the subtract 2, then you multiply it, so on, until you get to 1. And it's important here that it only involves natural numbers. So n cannot be 0, n cannot be negative. We have to start with a, it can't be a decimal or a fraction. Doesn't make sense. So again, this is fundamental counting stuff, right? Five people, okay? Four buses, okay? Seven uh, pens arranged on a desk, you know. It's not decimals or fractions, natural numbers. Okay, so knowing this, we go back to our example, and how can I write this a different way, or just simplify? Well, this is actually, look at all this as a whole here now. How can I rewrite this whole thing now? Anybody? How can I write it as one thing factorial? N plus three. It is simplifies to n plus 3 factorial because this is n plus 3 times all the numbers that are 1 less than it, then 2 less than it, then 3 less than it, all the way down to 1. So this as a whole actually simplifies to n plus 3 factorial. Okay, <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of blank faces here. Okay, so I think we kind of need to move, we, we need to do more of these, which is good because I have a few more. Um, but uh, we are getting, uh, this is a very similar one, so hopefully this will help. Here's an example, again, example two or three or whatever we're at. Okay, two, two factorial, whatever it is. Um, so n plus one factorial divided by n minus one. Well, if you start to write this out, Okay, and we subtract 1, and we subtract 1, and we subtract 1 and all the way down to 1. This is actually n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 factorial. Do you see that? Because I'd write all this out. This would be n minus 2, n minus 3, n minus 4, n minus 5, and all the way down to 1. On the bottom, we actually have n minus 1 factorial. So this, which represents a whole multiplication, right, all the way down to 1, is the same as this one here, a whole multiplication all the way down to 1. And so here now we can capitalize again on the factors dividing with common factors. Okay? So it takes a little bit of, um, start to write it out, and then you'll see some patterns emerge here. Okay? So this now can go away with this. It divides out. And what are we left with? We're left with n plus 1 times n in the numerator. And if we multiply that out, we get n squared plus n. Now I know this is now pretty heavy on the algebra stuff, okay? Um, you might think, well, this is a little bit too pre-calculus-y. We just got finished set notation and, and con you know, uh, conditional statements and things like that. Where did this all come from all of a sudden? Well, yeah, in this course there's a bit of you know, it's foundational, basic, logic, linear stuff. But there's also a little bit of, you know, 
algebraic, higher level algebraic stuff. So this does involve a lot of letters and stuff, but I have confidence in you, you, can, you can do this. All right? Um, the final one here, this is probably the, the most difficult question that you will ask, be asked to do. This involves a little bit of factorial understanding plus a little bit of algebraic manipulation. So it kind of puts things together, okay? Um, and actually, knowing what you know, I want to see, because I just know that there are some of you that might be able to actually figure this out without me showing you. And don't look at the book, because this might be an example in the book. But um, go ahead and take a minute and see if you can solve for n. Using any method you can. If you want to just do trial and error, I suppose you could. But my challenge to you would be, use the above principles that we've learned and see if you can come up with an equation that solves for n. Okay? So go ahead and take a minute. All right, so let's just uh, walk through this one and see how you did. Okay, some of you figured you got the value for n. Now, if we did trial and error, uh, you could kind of say, okay, well, this is n factorial, some number factorial, and then some number that's just two less than it factorial. When we divide that, we've got to get 90. So you probably could kind of work backwards and try and guess what n would be. But how do we do this um, on a methodical algebraic uh, way? So if you think about it, let's do, uh, it, let's write out partial the partial expansion of n factorial, okay? So it kind of looks like this, right? And is anyone seeing anything so far? Okay, we have n minus 2 in this list, don't we? And so, and I'm, this is equal to 90, of course, but you see we have n minus 2, which, is, which looks like this if you start to expand it, okay? And so does, do you see that you have some things on top and the bottom that you can factor out. Now, if you want to just say, hey, I see this one and this one. Good. What else? Well, I see this one and this one. Yes. And actually, I see all of these with all of these. So really, this divides out to 1. It's basically gone, right? We times 1. So what are we left with? In the numerator, we have n times n minus 1 equals 90. So we're getting close. We got no more factorials. We have no more denominator. So guess what? We kind of look at this and we say, okay, um, this is what I have. Now, the second tricky part is how do you solve for n? We've got n in two different terms. They're unlike terms. We can't smash them together and get one n out of there. We have to figure out how we can solve that. And what we do is we, we solve it. Uh, we, we recognize that this is a quadratic equation. And, um, whoops, <coughs> minus n. Sorry, let's do that one first minus n minus 90 equals 0. So how many of you remember this from previous classes, how you solve for n? So you have a couple different options. You can try and factor this into two binomials, use the zero product principle, or you could use the quadratic formula. Anybody remember the quadratic formula? Have you learned the quadratic formula? Some of you have, okay. All right, so let's, let's factor this. Is there, are there two numbers that multiply to negative 90 that only have a difference of 1? Yeah, probably. Okay, what are they? So n and then n, we're going to have two binomials equals 0. So what are these numbers going to be? They have to multiply to negative 90 and add to negative 1. You have it? I had it until you said that. You had it until I asked you? Like, I, I have yeah. the numbers. Okay, what are the numbers? Like Throw them up. Okay, 9 and 10. Good, 9 and 10. Now, how do, we, how do we know which one's positive and which one's negative? I guess that's the question. So, do you see how 9 and 10 multiply to 90 and they have a difference of 1? That's exactly right. Now, the product is negative, so that means one of these has to be positive, one has to be negative. Which one is which? Well, we have, they have to add up to negative 1, so we have to have a plus 9 and a minus 10 to get to negative 1. Does that make sense? Okay. So when you get to this point, then you say uh, the zero product principle says that if this times this is going to equal zero, one of them, or both of them, have to be zero themselves. So you let each of them equal zero, and you solve. So this one is going to be n equals negative 9. So negative 9 would make this factor zero, and positive 10 would make this factor zero. So these are our two options. Would they both be valid answers for this question? No. Look up here. No, why not? 
Negative. Who said that? Yeah, you. Hi, you're right. So n cannot be a negative, right? It has to be a uh, natural number. So we reject negative 9. And just to speed up things, I did a little check underneath here on 10. Okay, we reject negative 9 right here. And then if we put 10 in there, 10 factorial divided by 8 factorial, here we go. The 8 factorials are gone. And we have 10 times 9 equals 90. That is totally true. Okay? So that might be the toughest one that you are uh, going to be faced with here. And there's other examples in your, in your textbook. Okay? Uh, now, why don't you take a moment to look up the key ideas, and then I'll give you your uh, assignment for today. Okay, so the key ideas are right here. You can take a moment to look at that. And here is your assignment. You're going to love this. You're going to love this right here. Here's your assignment. I want you to do number one factorial, <clears throat> which you can decide whether that even makes sense. Uh, two factorial. What's two factorial? Number two, thank you. This, just, this, just humor me, okay? Teachers think this is cool, all right? Um, do you have to do also three factorial minus three? Thank you. So you have to do one, two, and three, and you have to do five AD and eight. And I didn't get too creative with the rest of it. Can we write eight uh, in terms of factorial something? What's that? Well, you could use three factorial. What's four factorial? Four times three is 12, times two is 24 times one. So 24? So how could I use four factorial to write eight? 24. Four factorial divided by? Three, thank you. You guys are awesome. You basically hardly even have to do any of this homework now. You're so good. Okay, that's your assignment. And here is the textbook, just in case you're stuck at home without the textbook. There's one, two, and three right there. Now, this is not a very long assignment. This is a really short assignment, okay? So if you'll get this done in this class time if you uh, work hard. And if you get this done, I strongly encourage you to take a look at some of the tougher ones. Now, I don't think I gave you 11, um, although I should have given you 11. Did I give you 11? No, I stopped at 8. Okay, 11, I don't know if you've done a question like 11, so 11 probably should be done. So I'm going to add that to the assignment, actually. So that would be, uh, what's 11? 3 factorial minus 3 times 4. Oh, yeah, there's so many good questions here, man. You should do all of these, really. What do you think? You want to do all of them? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, like that. Okay. So add, um, you know what, you should do probably 11 A and B, just to test that out, too. So 11 A and B. Okay. There we go. That's more reasonable. <coughs> 